Hello and welcome to this presentation on bed entrapment. In this video, we will explain entrapment as defined by the FDA, help you identify the entrapment zones, discuss common findings and questions, and offer possible solutions. A majority of the information used in this presentation was sourced from the FDA's bed entrapment guidelines found in their Hospital Bed System Dimensional and Assessment Guidance to Reduce Entrapment. Possible interventions suggested in the presentation may reduce the risk or eliminate the risk of bed entrapment. However, due to uncontrolled factors in the resident care environment, we cannot guarantee that resident bed entrapment is completely eliminated. Now we will go over an introduction to entrapment. The term entrapment describes an event in which the resident is caught, trapped, or entangled in a space in or about a bed system. Bed entrapment may result in deaths and serious injuries, including when a resident or patient suffers suffocation, strangulation, or other injury due to being caught within a bed system. A bed system consists of the following elements, a bed frame, side rails or assist device, head and foot panels, and a mattress. Here are some entrapment facts. Between 1985 and 2013, the FDA documented 901 incidents of life-threatening bed entrapments in the U.S. 531 incidents led to resident death. 151 reports include non-fatal injuries. 220 events required staff intervention without injury. And many entrapments may go unreported. Residents who are at highest risk of getting entrapped in a bed are frail, confused, restless, or who have uncontrolled body movement. Often, these residents need assistance to get in and out of bed. Entrapment Guidelines Bed Entrapment Guidelines were first released by the U.S. FDA on March 10, 2006. The Hospital Bed Safety Workgroup is comprised of approximately 75 members from the FDA, Health Canada, the Department of Veterans Affairs, representatives from national health care organizations, patient advocacy groups, and medical bed and equipment manufacturers. The HBSW identified seven entrapment zones in a hospital bed system, of which four are considered critical. Entrapment Guidelines currently tests residents' beds in four different zones. Zone 1 through 4 account for 80% of entrapment reports. There are a total of seven zones of entrapment within a bed system. This picture highlights where these seven zones are located in the bed system. Zones of Entrapment Zone 1, within the rail. Zone 2, under the rail, between the rail supports or next to a single rail support. Zone 3, between the rail and the mattress. Zone 4, under the rail or at the ends of the rail. Zone 5, between split bed rails. Zone 6, between the end of the rail and the side edge of the head or footboard. Zone 7, between the head or footboard and the mattress end. Note that although there are seven zones listed, only zones one through four are required zones. The FDA continues to monitor entrapments in zones five through seven and will issue further guidelines. With that in mind, all seven zones should be considered when evaluating a bed system for resident safety. Zone one, within the rail. Zone 1 is any open space within the perimeter of the rail. Openings in the rail should be small enough to prevent the head from entering. A loosened bar or rail can change the size of the space. The HBSW and IEC recommend that the space be less than 120 millimeters or 4 and 3 quarter inches, representing head breadth. Zone 1 failure is very uncommon unless you have an extremely old bed system. Zone 1 fails can normally be found on old chrome rails with large gaps. Zone 2, under the rail, between the rail supports, or next to a single rail support. This space is the gap under the rail between a mattress compressed by the weight of a patient's head and the bottom edge of the rail at a location between the rail supports, or next to a single rail support. If there is a single rail support, entrapment in Zone 2 can occur anywhere along the bottom length of the rail beyond the support, up to the end of the rail. Entrapment at the end of the rail is explained in Zone 4. Factors to consider are the mattress compressibility, which may change over time due to wear, the lateral shift of the mattress or rail, and any degree of play from loosened rails or rail supports. Zone 2 failures are one of the more common zones that cause entrapment risk. 
Zone 3, between the rail and the mattress. This area is the space between the inside surface of the rail and the mattress compressed by the weight of a patient's head. The space should be small enough to prevent head entrapment when taking into account the mattress. Normally, this issue is caused due to the design of how the rail attaches to the bed frame or due to the mattress being worn, therefore not offering the support needed. Zone 4, under the rail at the ends of the rail. This space is the gap that forms between the mattress compressed by the patient and the lowermost portion of the rail at the end of the rail. Factors that may increase the gap size are mattress compressibility, lateral shift of the mattress or rail, and the degree of play from loosened rails. The space poses a risk for entrapment of a patient's neck. It may change with different rail height positions and as the head or foot section of the bed is raised or lowered. The space may increase, decrease, become less accessible, or disappear entirely. Thus, in some positions, the potential for entrapment in this zone may still exist when the deck is articulated. Zone 4 is another zone with a high fail rate. Zone 5, between split bed rails. This zone occurs when partial or split length head and foot side rails, split rails, are used on the same side of the bed. The space between the split rails may present a risk of either neck entrapment or chest entrapment between the rails if a patient attempts to, or accidentally, exits the bed at this location. In addition, any V-shaped opening between the rails may present a risk of entrapment due to wedging. Zone 6, between the end of the rail and the side edge of the headboard or footboard. Zone 6 is the space between the end of the rail and the side edge of the headboard or footboard. This space may present a risk of either neck entrapment or chest entrapment. Zone 7, between the headboard or footboard and the end of the mattress. Zone 7 is the space between the inside surface of the headboard or footboard and the end of the mattress. This space may present a risk of head entrapment when taking into account the mattress compressibility, any shift of the mattress, and degree of play from a loosened headboard or footboard. Exclusions. Pressure reduction therapeutic surfaces, such as LAL surfaces, have a partial exemption from entrapment testing. This is due to the compressive nature of the surface. The only zone that applies is zone one. Bariatric beds are 100% exempt from entrapment testing. Entrapment testing tool. The proper method recommended to test for bed entrapment risk is the B4000 testing tool. The B4000 bed entrapment tool is manufactured by National Safety Technologies. The B4000 is the only validated test tool for assessing a bed system's conformance to the FDA and Health Canada guidance documents to test beds for entrapment zones one through four. The B4000 consists of the following, cone, cylinder, safety strap, and scale. The total weight of the cone and cylinder combined is 15 pounds. This represents the combined weight of a human head and neck. Reminder, attach the safety strap each time using the device to avoid injury. A two-person team can validate a complete bed system in 15 minutes. This method of bed entrapment testing will take into account mattress compressibility, loose rails, and loose panels. Prior to conducting any bed entrapment testing, please prepare the bed for testing. For ease of mattress movement and measurement, the patient should not be in the bed during testing procedures. Step 1. Lock the casters on the bed. Step 2. Put the bed in the flat position. The bed will be flat in all zone testing except zone 2. Step 3. Raise all the rails and assist devices. Step 4. Position the bed at a comfortable testing height. Step 5. Remove excess blankets. Testing should be done with sheets on the bed. Note, to avoid cross-contamination or infection, be sure to wipe down the testing tool between bed testing. Standard disinfectant wipes are ideal. Zone 1 testing is to check for potential entrapment of the head within the perimeter of the rails. Zone 1 testing uses the cone and scale. Strap the cone to the rail. Confirm if rail passes when the large end of the cone does not enter the rail opening with 12 pounds of force. If the cone pulls through the opening in the rail with 12 pounds of force, a failing grade is issued. 
Zone 2 testing is to check for potential entrapment of the head under the rails. Be sure to push the mattress away from the rail you are testing. Zone 2 testing uses the cone and scale. Push the mattress away from the rail when testing. Strap the cone to the rail. Confirm if rail and mattress passes when the large end of the cone does not enter the rail with 12 pounds of force. If the cone pulls through the opening with 12 pounds of force, Zone 2 is issued a failing grade. As you can see from the picture, this testing is done by positioning the tool between the bottom of the rail and the top of the mattress. Zone 3 testing is to check for potential entrapment of the head between the side of the rails and the surface of the mattress. Zone 3 testing uses the cone and scale. Push the mattress away from the rail when testing. Strap the cone to the rail. Confirm if the rail and mattress passes when the line on the cone is above the mattress. If the line on the end of the cylinder falls below the mattress line, Zone 3 gets a failing grade. No additional pressure is needed for this testing, just the weight of the tool itself. Be sure to keep the tool leveled when testing this zone. Be sure to push the mattress away from the rail you are testing. Zone 4 testing is to check for potential entrapment of the neck between the top of the mattress and the bottom edge of the rails. If the first point of contact between the rails and the cylinder is in the red area, the bed is issued a failing grade. Zone 4 testing uses the cone and cylinder. Push the mattress away from the rail when testing. The cone of the tool is positioned on the edge of the mattress. On the cylinder, you will see a leveling tool. Be sure to keep the tool level during this part of the testing. On the cylinder, you will find green zones and red zones. As mentioned earlier, if the first point of contact between the rail and the cylinder is in the red area, a failing grade is provided. Since zones 5, 6, and 7 are not currently enforced zones, there have not been any guidelines set out to test these zones. Please use best judgment to determine if the head or neck can be entrapped in these zones. Key test reminders. The bed system measurement device can be used incorrectly without proper attention paid to technique. Some common misuses include pressing the cone into the mattress next to the side rail or assist device to exceed the force from the weight of the cone as set forth in the FDA guidelines. Pulling the cone through the rail and mattress in excess of the 12 pounds set forth in the FDA guidelines. Forcing the cylinder under the end of a side rail or assist device in excess of the force from the weight of the cone and cylinder as set forth in the FDA guidelines. Please use your best judgment to follow the guidelines set forth in the device manufacturer's instruction and training material to determine if the head or neck can be entrapped in these zones. Common findings. Here you can see some of the most common findings when it comes to entrapment testing. The picture on the left shows a gap between the rail and the mattress being too large. This would cause a zone 2 fail once there is any weight put on the mattress. The picture on the right highlights a zone 4 failure. As you can see, the top part of the mattress is well below the bottom part of the rail. This would cause a failure in zone 4. Can you see the difference between the two pictures? The picture on the left is what a proper rail or assist device should look like. The picture on the right was taken from a bed that had a loose rail or assist device commonly found on beds that have rail or assist devices attached to the bed frame using one bolt and nut. This rail or assist device goes up and down by pivoting on the bolt and nut. This causes possible zone 2 and zone 3 failures on these loose rail and assist devices. Regular tightening of these rails is required on these types of rail and assist devices. Possible interventions. When identifying possible interventions for entrapment risks, it's important to first identify which of the seven zones is of concern. Once the zone is determined, you will need to pinpoint the root cause of the entrapment risk. Keep in mind that there could be a combination of things causing the entrapment risk. Here are the common things to look for. One, side rail and assist device, loose or bent rails. Intervention, tighten rails or replace bent rails. Some rail designs require particular mattress types to meet entrapment guidelines. Two, mattress, incorrect size, no firm perimeter or worn out. Intervention, 
replace the mattress with the correct size to match the bed frame. Older worn out mattresses can be replaced with a newer unit with built-in firm perimeters. Other options are raised sidewalls on the mattress. Three, mattress stops, missing or not engaged. Intervention, install or engage mattress stops. Four, head and foot panels, incorrect installation or loose. Intervention, tighten the panels. Refer to the installation manual to ensure proper installation. Typically, head panel brackets are facing the wall away from the resident. Foot panel brackets are facing towards the mattress. Beds with low air loss or LAL surfaces require additional attention. Effective ways to reduce or eliminate entrapment risks while providing a safe rest environment are inflate the side bolster when available, lower the bed to the lowest position when the resident is at rest, place a falls mat beside the bed, do regular checks to ensure the resident is safe in a safe sleeping position. Other therapeutic surfaces offering a higher level of resident safety can be considered if available. For instance, the Jerns ProMat convertible surface. The possible interventions suggested above may need to be combined together to provide a positive result. Although these interventions may reduce or eliminate entrapment risk, there is still a small possibility entrapment may occur. Common questions. How often should I test a bed for entrapment? If a bed has not been tested or if there have been changes made to the bed system, you should test. Over time, the condition of the bed, rails, or mattress could change. When this occurs, the bed should be retested. Why do I get a different result than the other testers? All the tools are designed to provide a consistent result. Some testers interpret the results differently. Please double check your results. How do I determine what result to use if the result is borderline pass or fail? Use your best judgment in these situations. It is best to attend to any beds that are on the borderline if they fail the entrapment testing. This concludes the entrapment testing video. Thank you for watching. And if you need more information or further assistance, please call our 800 number or visit our website at www.jerns.com.